Hello everyone and welcome to Spouse Conversations. I'm Tere. And I'm Fred. And in this episode, we are going to be discussing Overcoming Hard Times in Marriage. Keep watching. <laughs> if you know that dance, put it in the comments below. <laughs> Police woman, my cop. Five oh man. You the popo. You the popo. Hello. Well, we just want to say thank you for taking our time to come and join us today. And in case you didn't know, if you have any questions or if you want us to talk on a specific comment, please email us and send us an email at spouseconversations with an S at gmail.com. So spouseconversations at yes. gmail.com. You'll see that down here below. So okay. today our scripture reference is Luke chapter one and verse 37 and it says for with God nothing will be impossible nothing is impossible so let's get into the conversation so we wanted to come on and just let you know um, that we know firsthand what it means to see God help us through a hard time in our marriage yes and um, first and foremost we have to say that it's not by any doing of our own. It is really by God coming in and just really supernaturally resting his hand on our marriage and doing a work in each one of us. And that's because you allow God to do that. Not, mm -hmm. you know, you have to allow him in right. to be able to, to, for that to happen in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And when you understand the bigger picture of your marriage, when you identify the purpose of your marriage, when you understand that it's just not about how, about your own happiness or how you are personally feeling at that time, um, when you understand that it's all a part of your testimony, then and only then are you really going to be able to lay your flesh down you mm -hmm. know paul says i die to my flesh daily and it has to be a daily decision in order for there to be success after you've experienced a hard time yeah i mean you're gonna have hard times yeah. it's gonna come with the territory um if you think your marriage is uh just gonna be whether you you know the day you get married to whenever to eternity then jesus come that you're never gonna have any hard times no it's not gonna it's never not it's not true it's not gonna happen but the challenge of it i mean ma marriage is just like life every day you wake up and you start this new chapter this new page in your life in your marriage um there's gonna be chances they're gonna be you know i wish i could sit there and say this it's gonna be so much good it's never gonna be any hard times no that's not that's never gonna happen but with that with those hard times the devil sometimes can come into your marriage and try to use those hard times to, yeah. as a distraction to drive, you know, one person this way, one person that way. And you have to be able to diagnose and, and, and actually uh, recognize what those things are. Right. And those different devices will come upon you and you're like, oh, wait a minute, whoa, 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 this is the enemy. And, and I'm not going to sit here and say everything is the enemy either. Because there's at times there's things that we do on our own flesh that causes those things, and we know that we shouldn't have maybe said that or done this or done that. Um, we just have to be prepared to be able to say, okay, this is we're going through a tough time here. Let's come together. Let's seek God to figure out and allow Him to deposit wisdom into us to figure out how we overcome this situation. Because we shouldn't always just throw our hands up and say. This is it. Yeah. I'm We're done. done. Yeah. No, no. This guy's got more. Yeah. God's got more for you. You know, you don't you don't um you know, run a race and get halfway through it and just be like, ah, I'm not feel, like feel like doing anymore. it anymore. Let me walk out. Because you gotta turn around and go back the same way you can it's equal distance, whether you go back or forth. But in marriage you just cannot just say, I don't wanna try to dissolve this or I don't want to fix this issue. You have to because, you know, if you don't fix it now, it's going to have to be addressed later. Yeah. And we, and we as, as human beings, as, as children of God, definitely need to understand that if we don't allow God in our marriages, 
where we without them without him exactly because he, you know he's the author and the finisher yeah. you know he's the alpha and the omega and you know we have faced tough times and sometimes we've had to step back and be like oh what's going on? I mean when I think one of the biggest things uh, that we've learned is I can't fix her I can't fix her she can't fix me so what we have to do is we have to go in prayer and say God you know my heart God you know her heart you know I can't sit there and try to fix this and fix that because things go wrong you allow God to be able to fix those things um, because tough times Hey, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. They hit but it don't all. last. Right. And they hit us all. And the one thing that I can say that we learned from our mistake, our mistake was when hard time came, we didn't just talk, we didn't talk about it. Yeah. And it, there wasn't ever a really verbalization of how I'm feeling, how he's feeling. And so then that's one hard time that just kind of like, you know, got swept under the rug yep. and then another one came and it got swept under the rug until all of those issues that we had swept under the rug became noticeable and now you're tripping over over them and now now it's this big situation that has happened that has been you know it is yep. the product of all of these other little things and could have been prevented had we just talked about those little things or those you know those those little distractions that happen along the way it, it'll it lasts as long as you allow it to last exactly i mean you exactly. control it when it went with this tough thing or this yeah. tough thing that you're going through you control it both parties together yeah, yeah. you you together come as come as one you control how long it, it can last That's right. it can last for years it can That's last right. for months it can last for a day yeah. you control it you have to be able to step up and recognize mm -hmm. that I'm going to take ownership of this. I got dominion over this mm -hmm. and it's going to stop right now. But like she said, though, two, it's communication. Recon one thing is recognizing the situation yeah, yeah. Two, communicating and saying, hey, stop, stop, stop. We need Look to address, this, we need to address right this right now. <clears throat> and the only way to address something through communication, you'll find out that a lot of issues there's through communication. There's greatness in your marriage and lack of communication will nullify your yeah, marriage. Yeah, and it will weaken it. So communication is the key. If you don't communicate how you feel about something, how what, what you care about, what you're what you, you need to express certain things, mm -hmm. if you don't do that, you don't speak that out, mm -hmm. it could take your marriage way off course. Mm -hmm. But as as you as you're communicating and recognizing different things, it, it strengthens the marriage. That's right. The more you talk about different things, the way you voice different things, the way you say, hey I see this happening. You're voicing your opinion. You're communicating. It has to start with that. And the you have to be able to um, receive. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to deliver the message. And you have to also be able to receive, receive it. The message. And, and that's that's the key. And receiving isn't always easy either, especially if it's one something that you don't want to admit to something that you have recognized, but you're having a hard time dealing with it yourself. You already know. And for somebody like me, I am harder on myself sometimes than I am on anybody else. And um, so I know when I'm not doing something, when I haven't done something right, I know when I have made a mistake and then to have somebody else point that out in me, it makes me feel a little bit worse too, <laughs> you know? But um, once again, as we talked about in our last video, that the the covenant of marriage is a safe place. So if he recognizes something, he should be able to come to me and say, you know what, I see this, I recognize this, and I need you to receive that. And if I say that I, I respect my husband and you know I honor our covenant together, then I am going to have to take a look at myself and receive it and ask God to help me with that, you know? And that is one way that you can get over those hard times because if we're honest, sometimes we go through those things and we're going through them because we're being stubborn. <laughs> you know, we're going through them because, you know, I don't wanna lose ground or he doesn't wanna lose ground and we don't wanna, you know, look like either one of us are losing and it's not a win or lose. We win together, you know? Yep. If I'm not doing my part, we're still losing. If he's not doing his part, we're still losing. Yep. But when I do my part, I do my work and he does the same, we win together. Yep. Okay? So regardless of 
you think that you're one upping on your spouse that should never be the case no. No. You should, that should never be the case. And the one thing... There's no competition in marriage. Exactly. And There's the one no thing that I like that he said is it lasts as long as you allow it to last. Like right now, if you're a husband or you're a wife and you're watching this right now and it seems like there is a difficult situation at home, if the both of you come together and just decide that today it stops today, it can stop. Yeah. Like, yeah, you like take the, ownership of it. That's right. You fix it. You address it. The key is you take ownership of it. You address it. Yes. Then you, you communicate. Things will start falling in place. Yes. And but you, you have to go in when you when you declare that that we're gonna it stops right now. We need to address this right now. You have to declare that when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. when we finish communicating, when we finish talking, we're not gonna walk away trying to one up each other. Right. We're not gonna walk right. up, walk away with me just shaking my head so you can get your point across so mm -hmm. I can get back and watching the game. No, it has to be a solution. Right. You have to be there to figure out and develop a solution to fix whatever the hardship is, whatever you're going through. Because like she said before, if you sweep it under the rug, it just keeps going under the rug, going under the rug. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets bigger, but then one day it just blows up and yeah. everything comes out and then now, because one little thing got put on top of that pile, now you're having to deal with a thousand other things at the right. same time. When you, you know, you just right. you just have to communicate. I cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Communication, communication, communication is the right. key. Without that, you, I can't read her mind. She can't read my mind. We're not mind readers. We can only be able to voice what's what's wrong. You ask your spouse, hey, is something bothering you? Hey, I got. I think this is an issue there. I mean, one of the things that, when you think about it, we've been more thorough at it over the last year or so, two years, that if we have a disagreement about something, and no matter the time of the day or whatever, we're not going to go to bed. Mad. Mad. Because now, you got all night to sleep on it, toss and turn. Mm -hmm. Now, still what happens when you let it sit that long you don't think about uh a solution you're thinking about retaliation yeah and i can't believe that he said that to me i can't yep. believe she said that you know and it just you continues form a battle to plan. right and it just festers and festers and now now you've allowed room for the enemy to come in and start messing on your thoughts yep. okay because now all he's never going to anytime the enemy starts messing with you about your marriage it's always for the it's Toward, directed towards the other person. It's never about you. Yep. It's never about what you did wrong. It's always about what they did wrong and what they need to fix. But never, it will never be you taking ownership of the things that you need to correct and taking ownership and acknowledging it and saying, yes, this is, this is real. This is an issue. And um, working together, putting emotion aside and just dealing with the facts staying on topic not pulling up something that happened two months ago because you never you forgot to fight about it then you yeah. know and trying to put it in to this hard time you can't do that address what we are addressing right now stay on topic and take the emotion out of the way and find a solution and if we say that we are followers of Christ and we're children of God then with God nothing is impossible mm -hmm. that situation is not so big it's not so insurmountable that God cannot come in bring restoration bring healing and bring love back into that relationship and you have to be open and willing to that I think it's so crazy how sometimes us as Christians we can be some of the most stubborn and hard-headed you know individuals yep <laughs> and at the same time be some of the weakest yeah because we're we're thinking you know well you know you know i'm an overcomer and i you know i god give me the i'm the first the head and not the tail, tail. i'm above Those only and not beneath and we're taking that and we're misappropriating that especially within the confines of our marriage okay yep. so yeah go into it knowing that you're not perfect he's not perfect she's not perfect but go in knowing that we do want this to work, and it can if you want it to. Yeah, it's not one way. Right. It's two ways. You know, it's bi-communal, bi-directional. Um, you can't Bible beat. 
your spouse either like yeah look i was looking in the scriptures mm -hmm. and you know try to use the scriptures to call that out no i mean mm -hmm. the scriptures is going to be a place where you come together come together it's mm -hmm. going to build foundation it's going to also allow solutions in your marriage not as a you don't use it as a weapon mm -hmm. use it as a weapon to fight the enemy but as a weapon on your spouse right you don't go in there and say you know look what the word says it said you're supposed to be submitted to me mm -hmm. okay yeah it says that but it's not in this situation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you're wrong, don't try to take that scripture and be like, ah, oh, why it. submit to your husband? And flip it to make it fit yep. your point of view. You yep. know, let's take God's word at his word and not at our own idea. Exactly. You know, so we want to we want to do that. But overcoming hard times in your marriage, it is definitely possible. Yep. 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 I mean, mm -hmm. we had a hard time today. I got off work today. I wanted to come home. My wife, she wanted to go to the dog kennel. We already got one dog. And I was like, he, I do not want to go look at the dogs. The kids have their dog. And it's our dog. We want the dog Well, together. we want the dog, but that's the dog that they wanted when we moved. And so now I want a dog. I want a so little. Anyway, I want a, I want a little lady. <laughs> we had a heart. We had a, we had, we had a hardship today. And I was like, I don't want to go, you know. And then I was like, I was trying to spend some quality time because all the kids have gone with me, even Elise, and she's in Oklahoma. I was so then we got, so then we got in the, the car and I was like, me except I don't for him. want to go. We said, I was like, I don't want to go, and she's like, then she started the whole. I, you guys, <laughs> like did a little I, dog. Did I? <laughs> I, I did. Are all you that? moping? I did. Yeah, all so that. I wanted to go see the dog today. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, y'all <laughs> communication. So I was like, oh man. And it only took 15 minutes. We were To in drive there. there? No, we were in there all of 15 minutes, babe. And it took 15 to drive there. So 30 minutes. I we had to stop, we go. had to go that way anyway because we wound up going to get something to eat for the kids. So yeah, that was on that side of I town. Didn't want to. Lord, we just thank you right now. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for this conversation. Thank yes, you Lord. for the lives that will touch. Thank you for the people that are viewing it. Yes, so Lord. we just thank you and we you're giving us this opportunity, giving us this platform right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for watching with us today. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, topics that you want us to cover, please send us an email at spouseconversations at gmail.com. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.